police and bylaw officers will have the power to enforce the order by issuing tickets to rule breakers. But the government has yet to release or hadn't a few hours ago released the legal parameters or what constitutes an essential trip. How are police preparing? Nishan Duryapa is the Peel Regional Police Chief and joins us now from Mississauga. Hi, Chief. Good to see you. Thank you very much for making the time. Good evening. Nice to talk to you as well. Thank I, you. I, I just wanted to start off on the question of what you know, because we, we just spent some time talking to MPPs about some of the confusion surrounding this stay at home order. Do you have the regulations in hand? Are you able to enforce this as of midnight? So, uh, you know, ultimately we will be enforcing it or we'll be able to by midnight uh, without fail. Uh, in my experience, when uh, government works to establish a set of regulations uh it uh, there's a lot of work on the back end so as of yesterday some of it was already released uh, all the chiefs in ontario received an all chiefs message with which speaks to like three or four components of it we know that tonight we will be receiving the additional regulations i actually and along with other chiefs in ontario have a call with the solicitor general this evening in which we will be discussing the elements of it so it, in my experience even thus far in the last uh, year this is really how it kind of rolls out it uh, you know we understand the intent but the details which come out in the regulations don't come till a little after there's a lot of heavy lifting nonetheless on the back end uh, we do anticipate on getting the rest of it tonight so it's not all in hand and uh, we know that that's been sort of one thing that we've, as chiefs, been waiting for. So, so let me ask then, from, from your perspective, as someone uh, who will be leading the enforcement, because we did hear the Premier say that police will have a, a lot of discretion on this. And I think this is what a lot of Ontarians are, are asking themselves right now. For example, if I leave my house uh, sometime in the evening, are you randomly going to be stopping people who are outside for a walk, or e even if you don't know what the intent is, or in their car and asking them, where they're going, what they're doing, and, and when you hear the reply, does it have to be, for example, grocery store? And if it isn't, then what happens? Like, do, do you give them a ticket, and, and how much is that ticket? Yeah, so can I, before I answer that, can I tell you, this affects even me and my family, my, my mom, my cousins, aunts and uncles. The reality is, I just need to say, uh, it, it's a public, this is a public health issue and a narrative, which, of course, that has some implications that require uh, myself, municipalities to uh, you know help enforce. But the reality is what we're trying to do is make sure that people willfully abide by the regulations. So what I'm telling my officers is really no different than, you know, we've got two acts. One is the, the Recovery Act of Ontario and the one is the Emergency Management Civil Protection Act. Both of them have come into play at two different points. And at each point, you know, we've had a responsibility. It really isn't a lot new for us on the policing end to tell our people, look, here's what's not allowed to happen. Use your discretion. Be reasonable. If people legitimately are on their way, you know, to medical appointment, to the grocery store, uh, you know, it, that's what it's uh, intended for. I think where we're going to see in my experience from the last time there was an emergency declaration mm -hmm. is you will see police right across this province dominantly respond to complaints so when there's a complaint okay. for a group group of five or more or you know hey i'm at this store and so and so refuses to put his or her mask on uh legitimate or not we we will probably respond to those i i think you're going to see a sense of reasonableness to your question yeah. from uh chiefs that you know, again, to reframe this, this is why I started with the fact that this is a public health narrative that we're trying to align with and support. It is not a policing uh, matter or law enforcement matter where, uh, you know, and I'm not commenting, commenting on other provinces, but here in Ontario, the way this government has a rather approached thing is to do what's right under the vein of public health, not wave the white flag and, you know, drop curfews, and, you know, we're taking our cue from that in the sense that we'll do our part with the municipalities where it's appropriate. And there are egregious circumstances. Clearly, we'll respond and talk to people. It's always been we'd rather get compliance before enforcement. 
And, you know, that's the cue my, my people will take. Yeah, I guess what, I, what I'm trying to discern for, for people watching is just what's different. And you've kind of answered that. It sounds like there will be more response to uh, or maybe a larger response to complaints versus just these random. Like, I think we all have this picture in our heads of this order coming into place and all being pulled over and, and asked where we're going and what we're doing. From what you're saying, it, it won't really be like that. I, I honestly don't think so. And here's my thing is we want to restrict mobility. We want to really honor and reduce the outdoor gathering limits, five or more, you know, the closing of additional workplaces and mitigating the rules in between, wearing a mask. And the last piece is actually increasing enforcement. Uh, I think what everybody hopes for, and I can, I'm not speaking uh, as a chief, and I am on a call with all uh, the chiefs later this uh, evening, mm -hmm. is we're hoping for what it felt like the last round where it was a bit of a ghost town in everybody's neighborhood. People were, you know, honoring it themselves. But where it crosses the line and where it's egregious, people still want to go play basketball at a court or go for a 10-person skate at a public rink. You know what I'm going at. Yeah. I think that's where we're, you'll, you'll see us. I think most chiefs uh, have their own localized issues based on the nuances of the municipality. Here in Peel Region, we know we're a hotbed. You know, the Airbnb example is one that plagues us that we have been working on. But if you go to rural community in Ontario, it's going to look a little different. Okay, I'll leave it there, Mr. Duryapa. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.